Today we're going to do some advanced surfacing and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start a new sketch and we're going to start that sketch on the front plane and we're going to create a center line that's going to be the overall height of our part. Uh, then once we create the center line and we give it a dimension we're going to go in and create another line uh, that's going to be the width uh, of our part to give us a starting point and then we're going to convert that to a construction line with a toggle and then we're going to go and uh, get back into that sketch and we're going to go in and do a uh, insert a sketch picture uh, and you have to be in the sketch in order to do that so we're going to edit that sketch and then go to tools and sketch tools and sketch picture I'm going to pick one of the pictures that uh, gives me the most detail to insert into my sketch to give me a guideline to go by. Uh, this picture is uh, pretty large, so it takes a few seconds for it to open up. As soon as we get this picture opened up, we'll zoom out and then we'll drag the uh, use the drag handles to drag it down to size to uh, to make sure that uh, our standard or our um, guide is the right size. So this is really handy when you're trying to do outlines of other parts in uh, creating a um, uh, same shape uh, item. Uh, and you see here I'm going to drag over this line to uh, give it um, a starting point here at the top and kind of line it up with the top of that uh, bottle. And at this point I'm going to get out of the sketch and I'm going to start another sketch this time on the uh, front plane again and I'm going to use the spline tool and uh, I'm going to use a two-point spline uh, for the top neck of that bottle and I'm going to zoom in here so that you can see it a little bit better and you can see there that that's coincident with the top uh, grab my spline tool again and this time I'm going to capture the shape of this bottle as I go around, I'm placing points that basically give me the outline or the shape of this bottle um, as it uh, as I go down the uh, the silhouette of it. So you can see here just by placing a couple of points that I have created a sketch that gives me the shape of this bottle. Now to finish this up, to give it some kind of shape, we need to do a top sketch or a plane. On, uh, we need to create a plane first of all uh, using reference geometry uh, that's referencing the top plane and also at that top point uh, at my construction line. I'm going to create a sketch on that plane. I'm going to create uh, and use a center point arc which will allow me to do a half circle uh, that will give me half of this part. So uh, we're going to take that half and make sure that we're dealing with only half by selecting those three points and giving them horizontal relationships. Now while I'm still in that drawing I need to connect these two sketches together so I'm going to give it a Pierce relationship that's going to allow these two to know that they are connected and then I'm going to my surfaces toolbar and creating a, uh, a surface um, sweep and by selecting the pattern and then using my selection manager to select the uh, two um, two entities there we can uh, create a really quick uh, surface model um, so as you can see as I rotate this thing around that this is actually a surface model. Of course it's not the same, it's not to shape, uh, not to the shape that we've got on one side, it is to the other side, but we're going to go in and use our, uh, our tool for freeform. We're going to create a couple of things. One, we're going to make that line movable and tangent, that one movable, this one movable, and we're going to leave this one as curvature. We want it to stay basically the same. At that point I can add some points that's going to give me the ability to control the shape of this uh, surface part. Uh, I can multiple select these with the control key and then just drag them out to give my shape uh, along the same outline as what, uh, what the picture is showing. So here you see just a little bit of manipulation just selecting one 
at a time, or you can select multiples uh, to uh, to get the shape the way you want it. So as I go through this, you can see how easy it is just to uh, to click on these and to drag them out to get the size or get the shape that you're looking for, just with a little tweaking. And that looks pretty good. So we can also go down here and select our curvature combs, which gives us some idea of how the uh, the curvatures or curves are actually blending together. Uh, you can see there the the lines that come out showing the maximum or the most curvature, and and uh, we can also uh, do make it transparent so that you can see the sketch behind it. Uh, so that's basically the basic outline of our bottle. So we've, we've, we've already created this thing. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a, um, an inset, basically, if you would, to, uh, for that bottle. And I'm going to do that by making the bottle transparent, or the model transparent. And I'm going to create another sketch on my front plane. And using my spline tool, I'm going to go back in and grab the corners or grab the edges of that uh, shape. And again, we're just giving this thing a, uh, a basic shape uh, for it to go by. And once we get that shape into a sketch, we can go in and to our, uh, our features toolbar and into curves and do a split line. Uh, of course, we need to turn the transparency back off. But I'm going to go to Features and Curves and Split Line, and we're going to do a projection split using that sketch. And there you can see that now that part can be selected separately from the rest of it. So we basically split apart that face. Now we're going back to our Surfaces toolbar now to create an offset surface to uh, create an inset. And you can see here what this is happening if we reverse the direction. But we want to change that. We want a little bit smaller inset there. So uh, we'll, we'll take a look at this and see if that works a little better. And then I'm going to select that face and delete it. We no longer need the outside face. We just want to do the inside face. And as you can see here, as I zoom in, you can see that there's now an inset there. And there's two separate faces. And you can see kind of the gap between them. So we're going to use those two faces, create a loft between those two to close it up. Now we're going to put a fillet in there and it's going to be a small fillet so we're going to try this and see and it tells us that it cannot uh, cannot put fillets on laminar faces which means that there's several different features or different surfaces in there that need to be knitted together and that's what we're doing here at this time. Now we now can go in and put a sketch on here or a fillet on here and uh, we'll change the size of it to give it a little bit uh, smaller. That works good. Click OK. And that's not going to work there. So we're going to remove that face and just leave that one fillet in there. Now this is, uh, this is basically a half of our bottle. We can, uh, we can go in there now and uh, do an insert there and place a, uh, an extra body. or And I'm going to just hide that picture so that we can kind of see what we've got here, the half that we've got. And you can see there as I rotate it around that this is still just nothing but surfaces. And I'm going to do a mirror now using the uh, front plane as my mirror surface and do a mirror. And I'm going to use bodies to mirror, select the entire body and tell it to knit the surfaces together and click OK. And at this point we have a complete bottle. Uh, we have the uh, entire uh, bottle there and uh, we can uh, we can go in now and the last thing that's left is to thicken it. If we go to surfaces and thicken and uh, we'll just give it a 0.01 for the time being just so that we can uh, uh, get this thing thickened. And we're going to click OK. It takes just a few seconds for SolidWorks to thicken all the surfaces, all the walls there on that bottle. And then as you can see as I zoom in, there is your thickened surface. So now SolidWorks has created a solid from the surfaces that we had. This is just some of the functionality that can be done now in SolidWorks 2010 in advanced surfacing.